so let's talk about product photography at home you probably not have a studio you probably not have a studio at home you probably don't have access to any studio close by so I'm here well not me alone I'm here with Damoy aka camera boy on Instagram to show you how to take product photography at home so I'm probably I'm gone upstairs back with some other camera stuff so actually here setting up I'm just reach what's up guys I'm here once more to teach you guys about product photography at home which I introduced earlier but we have Damoy here aka camera boy on Instagram so you might go do a breakdown of how to shoot um, with natural light and also artificial light so all right all right, all right. so the, oh, the product out oh, there so what we're going to shoot today is going to be like a what is it, like a margarita like a beer type yeah thing. beer type thing so it should be a pretty easy product to shoot but all the stuff that i'm going to tell you guys they can apply it to different products so let's get it already see some of it in um, the intro <laughs> uh, if not roll intro <laughs> <laughs> all right so it's a G master 90 mil macro on a Sony a6500 body so this macro lens 90 mil is essentially like a 105 because it's a crop sensor camera inside I have like a memory card standard <laughs> memory card but I'm tethering even though I'm outside so I can see the shots properly to um, so see if everything is in focus and all of that and the software that I'm using is capture one it's a very simple setup just it's a regular um, what's it called it's like a USB USB cable to the camera and it just picks up in soft um, in capture one so yeah that's it that's the setup so now I'm going to show you guys the products we're shooting, well, the product that we're shooting is this Seagram's uh, Escapes. It's a classic lime margarita. So, should be a pretty, as I said before, it should be a pretty simple shoot um, because the product is, I like the product packaging, that's why we chose this one. As well as the prop should be very simple as well. It's just some lime, a cutting board, and some, ni and, and some knife. And <laughs> some knife. <laughs> some knife and a knife. Alright, so I have, we have a reference image. Wait, where you got it from? What a different image. Oh, alright, so for all of the shows that I do, I get my reference images from two places. It's either Pinterest or I look on Behance. So Behance is a free uh, platform that Adobe makes that you can upload your portfolios to and stuff. So it's a good resource as well for photographers, graphic designers, anybody really, any creative person. And you cut yourself in the dog. <laughs> on a pro, bro. <laughs> Once I'm on a pro. Alright, so I want to use like two limes. Well, a tip, a tip as well in choosing it when you're choosing a product is just like go through a lot of them. So if, if you're going to have a client that's going to send you a product, tell them to send you like a lot. <laughs> so it's like probably the best, the best, the best I can think about is probably like um, 24, like 12 to 24. So you can go through the products and see um which product is the best for example like shooting these bottles they're they're connected by a seam sometimes the seams go through the logo you don't want that unless you want like hours of work in photoshop because <laughs> i don't want to do that um so yeah so let's look for for ensure that the product is nice and pristine all right so for the setup now it's a pretty simple setup using one whole lime well lemon and then i'm cutting one in half Oh, yo, yeah, yeah. Just put these over as I go and I use them. <laughs> Alright. So you have the whole one here. And you just use the cut ones to just prop it up. You can use a knife or not. So I think that's 
I think this is it. That's exactly what you want. Yeah. So we're going to shoot it and see how it looks. And the reason we chose to do it here because we can realize that there's a lot of greenery in the background. So it really comes complements the product as well. So that's one thing you need to think about. Right? What are the colors of the product and ensuring that the colors that you choose complements what the product is. Alright. Oh, I don't want to tell him about the tripod. <laughs> it's just a really cheap tripod from Amazon still. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really cheap tripod. So I would say you guys it's just best if you use like a like a bald head tripod because you can turn it sideways if you need to do portrait shots like this. Um so yeah. You don't know the weight of the tripod because not every lens you can mount on that type of tripod. Oh, all my lenses are light and <laughs> cameras are light too. Honestly, I'm not really that technical when it comes to like the gear. <laughs> just want to say, I have a decent enough tripod that don't wobble when my camera go on it or my lens go on it. Because if the lens was longer, I wouldn't use this tripod because it might just topple over. <laughs> yeah. So when you're shooting, even though it's an like f2.8 lens, I don't want to shoot f2.8 because it will um, potentially let me lose information on the label especially so i'm shooting at f 5.3 but i think i'm going to go a little bit higher well let me just drop the iso instead of moving it so i normally shoot at iso anywhere between 100 and 200 just so i can get like a nice balanced image so i normally um, put the grid the grids on my camera so i can know the third the, the thirds that i should shoot on so i'm not trying to have everything too much in the center or how so it's depending on what the image is, is being used for so this image more than likely a client would probably use something like this for social media so they want to give them space if they want to add graphics to it or you just want to have a stylistic thing my thing is just put it on the left or the right third so you rather this type of setup or you rather the one with the artificial light um, honestly, I, before I used to prefer natural light, but not all the things that you want to do, you can get in natural light. And also, natural light is is inconsistent. So if I realize before the clothes were over, like we're, we're over us and we get nice soft light, now the sun will come back out. So you have to change constantly change our settings. With artificial light, you can control it a little bit more. So I'm, I'm split. <laughs> I prefer I prefer natural light still, but it just doesn't work for all cases. Alright, so another reason that I would normally tether, even if I'm shooting outside, is because one, I don't want to touch a camera after I set it up. After I find the scene and I set it there, I don't want to touch a camera anymore because that can introduce like micro shaking, mi mi micro shakes to your, to your scene, as well as it can like shift slightly. So if I find something I really like, I leave the camera and then I come on capture one and just take the picture. I can also change all the settings here like ISO, F stop, everything. So just click the button and good to go all right so i think i've exhausted everything that i can do out here now it's a pretty simple shot pretty simple setup um so going in other shade <laughs> so we can show you guys how to shoot with artificial lights let's go Alright, so me and Adamo are setting up for the artificial light scene. The outside shots them look extremely good, trust me. Yo, them look extremely good. And this is no big budget type of setup. This is just a homemade setup. Cheap and clean type of vibe. Because like the bounce board, you could just buy a cartridge paper um, no a bookstore. Can you get like the, the bounce board, like the cartridge paper on a yeah, bookstore? Yeah, you can just get a foam core. It's a foam board. You can get it in a bookstore, pharmacy, and early. Just need like a, something sturdy. Yeah, and you're, you're good, you see me? If I can just buy a white cartridge paper and glue it onto a cardboard box. Are you <laughs> good? And, uh, and that's it. <laughs> Boom! You don't say that I drop it out. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna set up for the, for the natural, um, the artificial light.
for the artificial light setup this one can watch the setup again the base of it is the Sony A6500 with the Sigma 2470f2.8 with and on top of that I think this is probably Pedro's favorite thing the <laughs> X-Pro S I don't really like it that much because the um, mount here are nice trigger it's a nice uh, trigger it's a nice trigger no no I just don't really like it as much I just see the, the design I just yeah the design. the design just weird and it just fluffy but mm -hmm. it work and then for the light we're using a Godox AD600 BM with a Godox it's a Godox and Godox which mm -hmm. I think is Godox um, diffuser I think it's a 55 inch diffuser or something like that I don't remember <laughs> So you have double layer of diffusion, so it's one diffusion layer is inside already. Oh, boom, I never have it in. Yeah. <laughs> but diffusion layer is supposed to be inside, but I'm gonna have that inside there now. So, yeah, um, just walk us through the base of what this setup is looking like and the thoughts behind it. So, again, we're playing to the, the theme of the product, which is like a green base. And with that, for it to pop, we went with a dark, a dark grey background. Kind of have some sort of texture to it as well. I really love this background. It's probably like one of my favorite backgrounds ever. It was pretty cheap as well. Uh, what I think is cheap in this realm is like 30 US dollars for the background. Or probably for like five of them. Right? Um, then we have a green tablecloth. This is just like a lime leaf. And these are just lime the same one as we showed you earlier we just cut them up in circles so we're just using the props to kind of frame up the image so this is just again paint to the theme of the product is just a, a lime leaf branch thing <laughs> um so we'll put that here to kind of just like with that with the the lime slices and and the um the green tablecloth kind of just plays again to the color the colors that, are, that we're working with for the image and then the lines in the in the tablecloth are I use them kind of like leading lines to lead it towards the, the the product label so it just brings the eye directly to the center of the image. Walk it through the light and set up now. So I have a light all the way out there. So trying to cast like a like the line is the light is going to cause like a line in the image. Anyway, so I'm trying to get it along along the side of the label here so it doesn't interfere with the label itself and go straight through it. So because we're going to show you some example of that on the screen. We'll take some already with it in there so you can show them. All right, so with this image now, as you can realize, it kind of, it's kind of dark on one side. So to fill the light on the next side, we could easily use another light, but you can just use a simpler solution, which is using what I was talking about before, which is the foam board. The foam board, just use it to bounce back light into the scene like this. So I'll show you how that works with this image. As you can realize, it fills up over here without needing an extra light. So you can essentially do this with just one light and a foam board. So I'm going to just pop it up properly so I can get into it. So the light over here just bounces onto the foam board and fills in the shadows over here. So essentially, you can just use one light for this setup and you're good to go. Thank you. 